Okay, just checking the podium mic again. Podium mic check, podium mic check. Line muted.
Line unmuted. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining in. Today we'll have a guest speaker from Benefits Health in Great Falls. It's Dr. Bridget Brennan, who's the Chief Medical Officer. But first I'm going to share some updates before turning it over to her. Yesterday I had the opportunity to meet with uh, leaders representing our tribal nations in Montana for our annual Tribal Leaders Summit. As many things have this year, things looked a little bit different, and so were the discussions, which centered a lot around the COVID-19 pandemic that communities continue to face together. Whether virtually or in person, it was another opportunity for me and for us to inquire if tribes are receiving the assistance they need and where the gaps are that we need to fill. Which is something we've strived to do throughout the pandemic as my administration remains in regular contact with the tribes. As we get into the flu season and as cases rise, it was echoed that the state needs to continue to concentrate efforts on reservations, especially when hard hit, and we're committed to doing so. Over the past couple of months, we've delivered personal protective equipment to the tribe's hardest hit, such as Crow, Northern Cheyenne, Blackfeet, and Fort Peck. This includes tens of thousands of N95 masks, KN95 masks, gloves, and thousands of gowns and face shields. We continue to work to fill requests for personnel. Of the 83 positions currently filled, the vast majority, 70 of them, are assisting reservation communities. A mixture of Montana National Guard members and civilian volunteers are assisting tribes with everything from contact tracing to delivering supplies to serving as assist staff for medical workers, EMS drivers, or registered nurses. While we're filling these requests as quickly as we can and to the best of our ability, we do continue to receive requests for additional personnel on the reservations and in other areas. Right now, there are 10 requests, pending requests that need to be filled. Most of those are for registered nurses. We already have strains on our healthcare workforce, and that will continue to grow with increasing hospitalizations at our critical care facilities and our smaller hospitals across the state. We recognize the pressure that it's putting on our healthcare workforce. We work to uh, source healthcare workers with limited success to date, and we know that the need will continue. Uh, we've exhausted the unemployment and volunteer database for volunteers to work in Montana. We've sent out a request nationwide for uh, National Guard medical staffing uh, to date with no results, and we continue to work to expedite the training of CNAs who can join the workforce to reduce the workload on our nurses who continue to serve on the front lines during this pandemic. I'd ask first if you are a registered nurse, licensed practical nurse, paramedic, EMT, CNA, or contact tracer, and are able to join our workforce, please do consider joining our team. If you're a nurse, you can certainly reach out to the Montana Nursing Association and offer your assistance. You can also do so and find more information about paid volunteering and registering through under Montana's healthcare mutual aid system through the state of Montana. This can be found on the Department of Public Health and Human Services website at dphhs.mt.gov backslash public health. We also know that some of our local public health departments have strained resources and need extra support during this time, including tribes. As we began our phase reopening in May, we had established a $5 million grant program for local public health offices uh, using CARES Act dollars. These dollars have been used by tribal public health offices and local public health offices to support contact tracing 
assist with case investigations, and help ensure that businesses are being compliant with following guidelines and have the tools to do so. Today I'm announcing a second round of the public health grants for tribes and local public health offices. Local public health departments that are in need of additional funds to assist with the important work that they're doing on the ground to try to slow the spread of COVID-19 will have the opportunity, opportunity to accept a second round of payments. Local public health departments all across our state are doing everything that they can to keep us safe and we need to continue to have their backs. These funds will help ensure that they can continue to hire additional staff if need be or secure additional resources to assist with preventative measures. The funds have to be expended uh, by December 31st, so we'll be working with local public health to get this funding deployed easily and quickly. We also continue to find uh, Montana solutions to boost our test capacity. Increasing our options for testing helps ensure that we can keep turnaround times as short as possible, make sure that those who are in need of a test are getting one. University of Montana Lab has come online uh, with the capacity to initially test uh, just 40 to 50 samples per day with the intent and plans to expand to 1,000 tests per day as soon as possible. Being one of our great universities, they certainly have the laboratory expertise and research capability necessary to contribute to Montana's COVID-19 testing needs. Initially, they're focusing on the testing needs of their campus and then expanding to statewide testing requirements. And they continue to work diligently through the staffing and equipment needs to grow capacity. Additionally, Montana State University will be announcing this week that they were awarded a $776,000 research grant from the state to develop a faster saliva-based testing methodology that will complement uh, the nasal swab PCR testing the state's already been relying on. The PCR testing being conducted at our state lab, at the MSU lab, and at our contracted lab, MAKO, will still be the primary means of testing. Simply once validated, this new test will again greatly expand our in-state testing capacity. <coughs> the grant and research validation at Montana State University, as well as the testing expansion on our University of Montana campus, are certainly great examples of utilizing the expertise that exists at our universities to provide Montana solutions to a nationwide and indeed international pandemic. Our universities, our local public health departments, and our healthcare workers are stepping up in incredible ways right now to do everything that we can to keep combating this virus. But they will be much more successful if all Montanans are playing on the same team. Local public health officers can't do their job, which is to keep Montanans safe from the spread of communicable disease if businesses aren't all following the same rules or Montanans are disregarding basic preventative measures. ER doctors and nurses can't do their job, which is to provide the best care possible if this disease continues to spread at significant, indeed alarming rates. I'll now turn it over to uh, Dr. Bridget Brennan, the Chief Medical Officer who, of Benefis, who will share her experience with this public health crisis, particularly as Benefits Health System sees an increase in hospitalized patients from Great Falls and the surrounding region. Thank you, Dr. Brennan, for being here. Good afternoon. I was asked to join you today to uh, perhaps help give you a perspective from um, the healthcare perspective and from essentially the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. I will put this very simply we are experiencing a public health crisis. The number of positive COVID cases is rising so quickly that it is threatening to overwhelm the healthcare resources here in the state. Over the last several months, we have watched other parts of the country deal with overwhelming numbers of COVID positive patients. Until just recently, the state of Montana really hasn't had that many patients compared to other parts of the country leading many to believe that this really wasn't such a big deal after all. 
Why go to such extremes when we really don't have that many patients? Over the last few weeks, that situation has clearly changed as we have seen drastic increases in the numbers of COVID positive patients across the entire state. The purpose behind the stay at home orders and the restrictive measures that were put into place has always been about keeping the virus spread from spreading too quickly so that the number of people who require hospitalization don't get sick all at once and overwhelm the healthcare resources. Over the last couple of weeks, you've all heard about our area hospitals reaching or exceeding their capacity. At Benefis Health System, we began to see an increase not only in the number of hospitalized patients from Great Falls and our usual, usual region, but we were also seeing an increase in the number of patients transferred to us from other parts of the state where ICUs were full. We decided at that point in time that we really needed a way to communicate with the other hospitals. And so we started daily conference calls with all of the chief medical officers from the larger hospitals so that we could share information and hopefully use the resources of the state more efficiently. I'm really grateful actually to all of my colleagues across the state for participating and for trying to do the best we can for the patients in Montana. Working together like we are helps us then um, assist our smaller facilities and our critical access hospitals across all the regions. We can only do so much. We have to look to you, to the public and the citizens of Montana to help us slow the rate of spread of the COVID-19 virus. We hope to have a vaccine soon and sooner than we've ever been able to produce one, but the timeline is still unclear. We really need your help with the things that we know work. Wash your hands. Don't go to work if you're sick. Avoid large gatherings where the virus can spread easily. Keep your distance, and when you can't keep your distance, wear a face covering or a face mask. We know these things work. Back in the spring, when we were in the midst of the flu epidemic, it was stopped in its tracks, <laughs> and it was because of these measures. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to everyone today. Please continue your support of your healthcare workers across the state. We need it actually now more than ever. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much, Dr. Brennan. Um, I'll now open it up for questions. If you'd like to ask a question of Dr. Brennan, myself, or my team, you can press five star. You'll be notified that your hand is raised. When we unmute your phone, you'll be notified that you've been called on to ask a question. First phone question. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Chad Sokol. I'm with the Daily Interlake in Kalispell. Uh, I was curious if you have a sense of where the, the need for medical staffing is most pronounced across the state. Where the need for medical, what was that, Chad? Uh, staffing. Go ahead, Doc. The simple answer right now is all over. There are a few hospitals, I think this morning's meeting, Dr. Brennan, when we were talking, it was four of the hospitals um, were at or above capacity for their staffing beds. That doesn't mean they have some ability to do some surge. I think all the hospitals that reported this morning, and these are just uh, the PPS hospitals that have been involved in this, not all the medical access hospitals, but you, we do have the data up on the website, uh, were at least at 70% or higher. So uh, there is need all across the state, um, some places a little bit more than others, but the way this is moving, I think we just need to be prepared for the state. And I think I'd only add to that in addition to the hospitals. Uh, I mean, that's one of the things that I was noting earlier of, like we've been trying to provide some resources to reservation communities and sometimes other areas that have challenges. Uh, and that's with 83 volunteers and just because the vernacular can get a little bit odd, like when we're calling for medical volunteers, it's not that you won't get paid, but it's, 
individuals that are willing to go to another place other than where they're living and do some work. And um, that can be on, in a relative sense, uh, short-term assignments. We have both volunteer you know, folks from the private sector and also members of the National Guard. But, and I guess I'll only also note, because I did uh, mention that, like, we put out a mutual aid assistance request to other states and haven't gotten anything back. Montana's certainly not the only state uh, that is facing sort of the challenges with health care and the health care workforce. Um, I know that many of the states around the country are, and that's, I guess, just an additional reason that we should be heeding Dr. Brennan's call that we need to get our hands around this virus. Next phone question. Hi, Governor Bullock. Um, this is Marisa from NBC Montana, and I think I've asked this question many different ways, but I saw a recent post um, on a social media site that had over 500 likes that said, stop getting tested, stop giving them contacts, stop helping with their numbers. And I'm wondering, how do you combat this divide in belief over COVID? Well, Marita, I think that how we combat the divide over COVID is to listen to our healthcare professionals, uh, to listen to challenges when hospitals are now at capacity. Um, to recognize that, look, this is a virus that impacts certainly those that are most vulnerable, but also can impact anyone. And it certainly isn't a matter of doing additional testing that's filling our hospital intensive care units. It's this virus. And let's be honest and clear, 36 states, right, have seen an increase this past week over the week before. 21 states are at a seven day peak, meaning they've seen the greatest. So first of all, Maritza, I'd encourage you not to read social media. <laughs> I usually try to avoid that. And um, that's also not where we should be getting our information, right? And we need to be listening to uh, trusted medical providers and others in our communities saying that, look, by sheer numbers, we know it's not just testing that is causing the increases because even earlier on when we weren't testing at the same levels as we are now, we didn't see the volume and sheer number of cases in our hospitals. Next phone question. Hi, Governor. It's Phil Drake from the Tribune. Hey, Phil. Would like to ask a Dr. Hi, sir. How are you? Uh, would like to ask Dr. Brennan in terms of uh, what do the doctors think in terms of the measures and the directives that the governor has put in place, would you like to see stricter measures and easing? Or also, I was just wondering if you could comment on North Central Montana, Great Falls area, Cascade County, would you like to see some stricter measures put in place? Or do you think, you know, or, or are you okay with, with what's been done so far? What a loaded question to start me off with. Um, I, my, my feeling is that um, this is not a political issue. This is a personal responsibility issue. And I think if we um, all approached it from that perspective, um, that we would have greater success in trying to uh, contain the spread of this virus. Um, I would like to think that most people are, um, they have the well-being of the people around them at heart and that they would do anything to keep those people safe. Um, I also know that people don't like to be told what to do. And when they are, that actually um, becomes the issue and it doesn't allow the reason behind the mandate 
to be forefront and center of everybody's attention. So um, I think uh, having spoken to my colleagues across the state, um, they are doing the best they can to keep up with the volume of patients that we're seeing. And um, they don't have time to get into the political arena or to, um, to make comments about what people should or shouldn't be doing aside from what we know works. And we know what those are. And so um, all I can do is plead with people to, to be reasonable and to be thoughtful about both their own personal safety and the safety of the people around them. Hi, this is Rachel Kramer from Yellowstone Public Radio. I wanted to ask two questions. One of them, um, Governor Bullock, is when did you put out the mutual aid request to other states? Three weeks ago, maybe? Yeah, about three weeks ago, Rachel. Okay. Okay, great. And then my second question is I saw that the White House Coronavirus Task Force is recommending that Montana utilize every PCR machine in the state for COVID-19 testing. Um, you talked about increasing testing with the universities. Um, is that something that you would consider doing with private companies or basically any lab in the state that has that equipment? Yeah, Rachel, a couple different things. One of which is in order to make sure that you have that P PCR and you're utilizing it, it still has to be a CLIA lab, um, which is a certification that occurs. and like that's what we did with Montana State University and University of Montana. But the fact of the matter is, is that uh, we're not having bottlenecks when it comes to testing capacity right now. So it's great to get University of Montana online and there have been times throughout this where we've also ran some tests through some of our hospitals, other PCR uh, machines, but my greatest concern right now isn't uh, testing capacity or testing supplies, it's all of us trying to get our hands around this a little bit better so that um, we're not having as many positives. Oh, Mike? Great. It is part of the problem, and the question was um, if we have staff at Benefis affected, and we do. We have a number of employees who have been um, who have been affected and are out, um, and that in turn will affect our staffing. And I think I'm not alone in saying that it's across the board. Everybody's having staffing issues because they're being um, they're being infected. They have to go home. They have to stay out of work. Um, it's something we're certainly dealing with, um, but yeah, it's having an impact. And they're not getting sick at work. They're getting sick outside of work. Home, grocery stores, gas stations, bars, restaurants, they're getting sick and then coming to work. And, and hopefully we've, we've been able to put enough protection in place at work that we're not exposing other employees. Can I answer your question? Uh, Another question for you, doctor. Uh, <laughs> I won't go anywhere. Yes. Uh, th this is John Riley with Montana Television Network. Hi, John. Earlier, you painted a pretty dire situation um, with your warning about this being a health crisis. Mm -hmm. If we do not change, what is that going to look like in our healthcare system, and what is that going to mean for Montanans? Um, if we don't change and we don't get a hold of this, um, as we go into cold and flu season, where we traditionally see higher numbers of admissions to the hospital. Um, we're gonna see more and more hospitals reaching that capacity. We're gonna see ICUs that aren't going to have beds for patients that need them. And that in turn is going to funnel down to the rest of the hospital system to where we're holding patients in the emergency department. Or we're not gonna be able to accept a patient from Browning or from you know, some of the smaller critical access hospitals that usually rely on us to help them. And so, 
like I said earlier, it's all about slowing down the spread of this. If we can slow it down, fewer people will need hospitalization at once. And we can do that, we can handle that. But if we get overwhelmed, it's gonna gridlock the entire system. And so that is my plea. Uh, you know, I don't expect it to be wiped off the face of the earth instantly. I just need it to slow down a little bit so we can keep up with it. I believe we've had one positive. I'd have to uh, defer to Jim about what is happening in the state, but I, I know we've had one in Great Falls. Maybe not confirmed. Okay, so good. Can I work with you? You're welcome. Go ahead and follow up on that to get your flu shot. Um, just got mine yesterday and would encourage folks to be doing so for sure. Uh, phone question. Any other questions? Well, again, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Brennan, for coming down from Great Falls uh, this afternoon. And I hope that it is one more encouragement to say that, look, as our hospitals are all having calls together each and every day saying, how can they best manage what is hitting parts of our state so significantly that they know that they have to be doing this together. Just encourage Montanans to view this as something that we have to do together as well, um, to, as Dr. Brennan so aptly and elo eloquently said, slow the spread of this virus. Thanks so much.